Afternoon, uh, Bill Kim here. I pastor the Congregational and the Presbyterian Churches here in Clarion, Iowa. As uh, usual, my friend Ted Bunn behind the camera, uh, recording our devotional thought for the middle of this week. Apologize for being a day late, but uh, such is the way things go, right? Uh, we are still planning on uh, worshiping together on the 5th of July at the park, the Congregational and the Presbyterian Churches. Uh, we're looking into a portable sound system that can help us out there. Uh, that's still our goal. I would still say, uh, if you have prayer concerns or if you have needs, um, either your deacon or directly call the church, leave a message on one of the church answer machines, call my cell number that's out there my email address is out there. The church's email address is out there. Um, if you or someone you know uh, needs uh, spiritual or physical help of some kind, please uh, don't be afraid to, to reach out to us. So for the devotional thought today, um, a little different than what we've normally done, but I feel like um, we, I as the pastor, we as the church, need to uh, address the uh, racial unrest that is uh, running rampant, if you can say it that way, in our country at this time. I have uh, a statement that I've worked on. Um, let me share with you as a devotional thought today. So our daughter Frances shared this idea with me about the story that Jesus told in Luke chapter 15 and I think this is a good place to begin. If you read Luke 15 the first few verses there you see that there were a hundred sheep and one sheep went missing. The shepherd leaves the 99 and goes after the one. Of course the 99 still matter, but they are not the ones in danger. The one is. Black lives matter. Most of us have an opinion. Here's mine. I do not believe that violence is the best answer to any of the difficult questions we face in society. Period. That being said, I have no idea what it feels like to be an African American man in our world. I have no idea how it feels to have a 14 year old young man in my family beaten and murdered for the crime of flirting with a white woman. That was in 1955, just a few years before I was born. I have no idea about how it, what it feels like to have a discussion with my son concerning how he needs to respond should he ever interact with a law enforcement officer. And I have no idea about how it feels when my son does not return home on time and I wonder if he had that interaction. I have no idea about how it feels to be concerned for my safety when I go for a run on a public street. And I have no idea about how it feels to be chased down by three men to have a shotgun pointed at me and to be shot because of the way I look. I have no idea about how it feels to watch a video of my loved one dying because of poor training, poor skills, apathy, or prejudice. And I have no idea about how it feels to live this sort of tragedy over and over and over again. For our African-American brothers and sisters, America has not lived up to its promises. I don't know exactly what to do to help change happen. 
One thing I can do, though, is not lump every protester or every law enforcement officer in the same category as those making poor decisions. One thing I can do is not be so quick with my judgment and my condemnation concerning all the people who are choosing to protest or all the law enforcement officers trying to keep order. One thing that I can do is to say out loud, Black Lives Matter. No but this, no and this, no also this, no additional comment. Black Lives Matter. I am for justice and accountability. And I am for an end to the racism that has existed for too long in our country. Thanks for listening.